need to decrypt that. Oh yeah, I got a concern. Well, what we've heard so far today has been very educational. I think uh, Steve Franks was speaking to um, innovation, creating new concepts and ideas. Um, there's some interesting stuff that you can do there with demonstrations and prototypes and stuff. Um, it's all about uh, creating ideas, and then, then we followed up with John Sampson speaking to uh, what we're doing from an economic development perspective here and how we're trying to change the conversation around to growth. Uh, you know, a couple of things that I was seeing here is retention and expansion. I know attractions, you know, you know, bringing in new businesses to the community is very important. But where I spend a lot of time and focus and passion is on retention and expansion. Um, working with manufacturing companies, uh, trying to have them grow by increasing the sales of the products and services that they offer. Um, and how we do that is through getting out there and selling our products and services. Um, so I want to talk specifically today to uh, marketing, um, both in a business-to-consumer perspective, B2C, um, but with a, a heavy emphasis on dealer and distributor networks and how we can try to focus to try to help them become more effective at doing their job of selling your product and services if you happen to have a dealer and distributor network. Um, I want to start off the conversations with just kind of iterating some of the challenges that marketing departments uh, within companies are having to deal with that are what I refer to as traditional challenges. Um, I want everyone to, to kind of be on the same page here and understand that no one is in, in a boat, so to speak, by themselves. Everyone is experiencing uh, very, very similar difficulties. One of the things that I've seen through the consulting efforts that I've done across the manufacturing space is, you know, everyone starts off the conversation with, you know, I know we're really different than anyone you've ever worked with before when we have these challenges. And, pretty much across the board, it's the same challenges. So everyone is experiencing some of the same difficulties. Um, marketing resources. Um, one of the things we want to, to speak to when we talk about addressing the issues of efficiency and having um, your, you know, your dealer and distributor networks and your B2C operations become more effective is that we're not going to run out and hire another 50 people to work in the marketing department. Um, you're going to have to do more with less. So one of the criteria that we work with here from the marketing resources perspective is everything has to sort of have a one-to-many attribute associated with it, where somebody can do something and have a large impact across the entire organization, across your dealer network. So it's not uh, the old bucket brigade approach where we're going to hire a bunch of people to do, to do something to fix the problem. Everyone is still struggling, and always will, I guess, with uh, Brand and message consistency. Um, this is a problem that every organization is working with, especially if you have a dealer and distributor network where you're taking materials and you're handing it out to a bunch of folks that are supposed to represent you in your product and service. And they basically butcher your brand. Um, it's something that everyone has to deal with, um, and it's an ongoing problem. Underperforming dealer and distributor relationships. Um, I've worked with a whole lot of manufacturers, um, particularly some in the automotive industry that have lived off of orders because they're tier two and tier three suppliers to the automobile industry. Um, and they pretty much fall into the mentality of when the phone rings, I'll fulfill the order and that's a good sales year for me. Um, well, when you've seen a lot of the large manufacturers leave or cut back or the economy downturns, they quit ordering and a lot of folks uh, you know, don't really know what to do, you know, having to go out and actually shake the tree, so to speak, and generate some business is something that we really haven't done a lot of in the Midwest in the last 20 years. It's basically living off of relationships that have existed with larger companies. That is typically the MO of a lot of uh, manufacturers. So underperforming dealer and distributor relationships is something that is a challenge that we have to address. Small or shrinking budgets. I mean, everyone is uh, one of the things that I, sh I struggle with in, in providing consulting services to manufacturing organizations is when the economy turns down and you're looking to start cutting expenses, um, you know, the marketing budget is, is really a great place to start. Not people want to cut the budget, you know, it's like, well, when, you, when things pick up again, we'll start spending more to generate business. It's fundamentally flawed. Um, if at all possible, you need to figure out how, how to get more money into your marketing. Because when the economy turns down, we have to become more competitive. We have to fight for the business that's out there. 
If you hunker down and don't do anything, you will continue to have the percentage of market share you had before the downturn took place. And if someone happens to be sort of spry and they decide to do a little bit more effort, they're going to take more of that percentage and when the economy picks back up, they're going to own a larger piece of the pie and it might have been your pie. So think about that. Measuring success. Um, this is something that's been around since I guess the first person tried to market anything, anywhere <coughs> in the world. Um, measuring success has always been, uh, been an issue when it comes to marketing. You know, the old adage is, I know that 50% of my marketing budget is wasted, I just don't know what 50%. Um, it's been around for a long time. Uh, measuring success is something that any new solution to uh, your marketing woes has got to include. You have to be able to show that the dollars and cents that you're spending on producing results is not fair to the other departments within the organization. They're all ways held accountable to the products that are manufactured. You have to be held accountable to the marketing that you do to make sure that it produces results. So going forward, new solutions have to be able to measure the success of the spend associated with them. And here's a good one too, consistent execution of marketing techniques. Uh, this is really going to be important when I start talking about dealer distributor networks because in that one to many attribute scenario that I was speaking to earlier, um, it's very important if you figure out how to make something work that you rinse and repeat, um, that you don't try to reinvent it. Um, not everyone has that creative spark. Uh, you take the people who have that creative genius, you produce a great result, and then you copy those people. And you do it again and again and again and again until they come up with a new brilliant idea. So these are some of the traditional things that, um, that all manufacturing companies and companies in general have had to deal with. And now I'm going to make it hard, okay? Because on top of all of those existing challenges, we've got all this new digital marketing stuff that's out there. You know, everyone has been using the internet for a long time, um, poorly. Uh, now we're trying to figure out how to do it and actually generate business, okay? Uh, I was part of that uh, big rush to, to get to get to market with uh, some of the first internet stuff that, that came about. Um, as Matt alluded to, I was uh, actually architected the web presence for Columbia House back a long time ago. Um, but uh, it was one of the first few very successful ventures that were out there. We did about $2 billion a year online, which was not too shabby back, back in the day. Um, we were the, like it was the third largest in the, in the world at the time, as far as making revenue. We were quite a bit bigger than Amazon. They actually didn't make money for 10 years or something. So, um, you know, you've got major search engines, you've got this big social thing that's out there, and marketing in these spaces, frankly, is challenging. It's not as easy as it used to be. New, new digital marketing challenges. Um, I just want to allude to you know the online stuff versus traditional. Um, the days of um, putting an ad in the yellow pages and you're good for 12 months are over. Okay, that doesn't work anymore. You have to be a lot more active in your marketing because the public demands it. Um, localized product visibility is required. It's required. If someone is looking, I mean, there's two ways. I mean, they look nationally for your product services when you're, you're interested in a, a price comparison type scenario and not interested in the time uh, to deliver the product or service. Uh, but the other method is, is localized visibility. And when people look for your product or service locally, you better show up. You better be right there. You better be pitching. You better be pitching a competitive pitch. You better be sensitive to what your competitors are doing because if they have a manufacturing discount that's going on and you don't, people are going to see it immediately and they're going to make a decision to go with the person who's got the best deal. So the idea that I'll change my mind in 12 months and put a new ad out there is gone. We need to be actively involved in a competitive, fast-paced marketing strategy and we have to take the people who are experienced leading that effort within your organization, leverage that expertise, and rinse and repeat. Customers, <laughs> anybody got those? They are incredibly demanding today. Incredibly demanding. 
and you have to be able to cater to their needs. I mean, it's like on the internet, you should be able to order a hot cup of coffee and someone should materialize and hand it to you. I mean, that's what the people expect today. Expectations are extremely high. And if you don't rise to the occasion, someone else will. That's just it. Someone else will rise to the occasion and they will deliver. I mean, the stuff that goes on today online is just absolutely amazing. I mean, we order computer parts uh, for, for systems and stuff that we put in at our facility when we have uh, new stuff that we need to, to construct. And the, the, the parts come out of LA in California. And I get them the next day with two day grain. I mean, that's amazing. So being able to deliver solutions like that and meet your customers' expectations is a serious challenge. Special promotions, anything that you do from a promotional perspective has to be made available to everyone in practically real time. Like I was saying before, if you're in a situation competitively and you have uh, changes that are happening in your market space, and you know, I'll, I'll pick on a couple of our, I've already picked on Nick's up there, the stuff I'll pick on Tim with water firms. I mean, if, if one of his competitive uh, uh, product lines that he's working with, um, they <coughs> offer a manufacturer's discount for a product or something, and they don't react to it, then you get into a pricing comparison type scenario. You have to be able to make these changes quickly and adapt to the situation and come up with a competitive solution for it. And it's not like, let's have a meeting, we'll get back to you in six months. I mean, you could, you know, your quarter could be destroyed because of something has happened from a competitor. So you have to figure out a way to deal with that challenge. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. So let's just go back and talk about some fundamentals. Um, basically, there's two ways to get products to consumers. Okay? Basic stuff. As a manufacturer, you can do B to C. Basically, you can manufacture the product and you can sell that directly to the consumer. The other technique, that's the direct to consumer, is the indirect methodology. Someone is selling your product for you. Basically, you have a dealer or distributor network. And that's pretty much it. Fundamental to these things is the internet. Okay, now go back to some of the traditional marketing challenges and some of the new media challenges. The internet is core to the new media challenge statement that I made earlier. To both of these techniques, your business is going directly to the consumer and your business is selling your product and service through a dealer distributor network. The internet is the core to this being successful. Today, people are researching products and services that are offered online at an unbelievable rate. Practically everyone is doing it. And this year, they're actually doing it more on these that they are on PCs. So now I'm like walking around the store and I can scan a barcode and get a price match and find out where I need to go and get directions to it. It'll talk to my car and tell me in English where I need to go. I mean, it is led by the nose. Okay. I heard, maybe you can verify this, but I heard in the neighborhood of 70 to 80% of people that have been on Facebook are doing it on their, their hand. It, it's an incredibly high number. Yeah, it's I mean, no longer at the, the laptop. Technology is changing rapidly and what everyone needs to understand that those mediums, those are just delivery vehicles. And you need to have a technology and a, and a message and a methodology that's going to work when whatever device comes out that replaces this. It's still going to be using the, the internet and the World Wide Web to communicate the data and make decisions whether the next time we find it in our head or who knows what they're going to do about next. But it's pretty amazing. So why today's like you had customers demanding one a long time ago, we, we didn't have this demand a long time ago. Like I expected, and now everything's everybody one one everyone would expect everything everything else. And I don't still understand that. Anymore. Yeah, it's everything's moving at a very very fast pace. So you have to be quick to adapt to it. I just, I just saw a stat today: forty percent of smartphone owners have used their smartphone to shop a product or service inside a brick and mortar location. Right. Okay. So you can actually find it faster on your phone than you can find it by going to Aldi. So, <laughs> well, well, just to piggyback, I mean, it doesn't matter which, which 
you know, distribution channels you can have, the customer shopping you right there at the point of purchase. Uh, and this is key. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is the key. The key point to what we're going to be talking about today is you have to develop a strategy that both supports your direct to consumer aspects of your of your business and supports your dealer network. And when we get into the dealer network stuff, oh, that's way more complicated because then you're trying to convince somebody else to do what you need to do, which is always a challenge. So, what I want to speak to briefly is what you have to do in both a B2C environment online and a dealer network online to basically figure out how to take your product and service to market. You know, we have a philosophy that we call Net Center at Sears ABS. Um, it's basically a science that we put together over the last 15 years or so of doing this on how we go about figuring out how we need to develop a web presence for, uh, for a company, whether it is a company site, a corporate site, or whether it is something supporting their legal networks. So basically how we begin is taking a look at your target demographic. Um, I always use the automobile industry when I talk about this because I've worked a lot with them. So everyone who is looking for some form of transportation is in your target demographic. Um, and then you have to proceed with uh, segmentation where you're breaking that target demographic up into subsets. So we talked along the lines of, of transportation. Um, a, the A cloud may be someone who's interested in um, commercial diesel trucks. Uh, the B crowd might be someone who's interested in an electric hybrid vehicle. Um, both of those are forms of transportation, but the message you, you have to develop for each one of those is very different because you want to have a one-to-one -one conversation because that's what takes place on this little phone when you're <coughs> looking for something like an electric hybrid vehicle or a commercial diesel truck. You have to understand what mediums that you're going to be using to communicate that message to these different seg uh, segments of your overall demographic. Things are very important because I said things are changing. I didn't say that it had completely changed. Other mediums are still very viable in communicating your value proposition to your customer base. It's not just the internet. I mean, you still can do local advertising, uh, radio, television, all of those are still viable mediums. Um, and you need to be able to support that on the internet because when it comes back to that measuring success thing that we, we pointed to, we want to make sure that we develop a hook scenario in any form of outreach that you do so that we can identify where the lead or opportunity came from. Uh, we can track where it comes into the website, what it, where it came from. We can track it right down to if there was a request for an order, whether you're doing processing through a shopping cart scenario, or whether it basically leads as, as it becomes a lead to a CRM type solution where there's follow up in a much more complex sale. Uh, Tim is not selling water furnace units and a shopping cart. Um, there's a whole lengthy process, but he has to be, that lead has to hook up to a uh, professional who can go figure out what they need to do from an installation perspective and ultimately tell them how much it costs and do an implementation for it. So being able to put hooks in for all those different mediums is super important. I think Tim will probably speak to that today, being able to track where you spend money and what, what results that it produces. That's super important and it's all integrated in whether you're going business to consumer or through a, direct, um, a dealer network. It all needs to be integrated into a solution that allows you to track it, that allows your dealers to track it. And we'll get to the specifics of that here in a little bit. But going from your mediums, identifying those to, you know, what we call your sales path, which goes from first contact to customer acquisition, identifying all the necessary steps that it takes to sell your product to that particular segment. And they're different across the different product lines that you offer. Understanding that is not only important to be a good salesperson or a good marketer for your product, it's critical when it comes to doing stuff online. Why? Because you're not there. You can't explain, you can't talk to the people, so you have to predetermine the answers to their questions beforehand, because oftentimes that's what they're actually searching for. We'll talk about search here in a moment. But each one of the steps in the sales process, if we talked about one of those being an electric hybrid vehicle, which I refer to quite a bit because I'm a tree over. Um, say the step, one of the steps in the sales process there is the battery life of a, of a battery in an electric hybrid car. Well, someone online or using one of these portable devices who might be saying, you know, I'm interested in one of those, but I just don't know how long those batteries last. I heard they cost a lot of money. So I'm going to do a little quick Google search. I mean, everyone's played a little Google game, right? You look up something, get the answer to every question that has ever been asked 
because every bit of information that has ever been masked over the history of time is now available in Google. So I remember when you had to go to the library and do this card index, do a decimal thing, and nobody knows how to do that anymore. So now you just ask the almighty Google and give you the answer. Well, that is if you put the answer out there for them. So if you were selling one of those cars and you look for battery life in an electric item vehicle, and you had that content on one of your pages and it got indexed by Google, Bing, or Yahoo, and someone showed up and clicked to it, what do you think the chances are that if someone is searching for the battery life in an electric hybrid vehicle that they're interested in purchasing an electric hybrid car? Audience participation. Hi. Okay. If you search for pizza for Lane, pretty darn sure you're going to go get a pizza. So understanding what people are looking for and being able to match those things to the product that you're offering making sure you develop the message that's going to be communicated. You have really great pizza. Come by, we've got a special offer right now, $9.99, you get the works. You know, whatever the case may be. Um, those things are all applicable to manufacturing. All applicable. Okay, you have to have that component in the, the, the solution that you're bringing to the title. And then you have to have a proper call to action, buy my pizza here. Put your pizza in the car, click right here, and I'll send a water furnace trained engineer right to your house, and he'll tell you exactly what you need to do to save the world. Um, and then the last component, which is super important to that measuring success step, is some form of analytics that allows you to tie all of these things together. Every form of marketing that you're doing is tied together through the internet as sort of a hub to a spoke wheel. If everyone's heard me speak before, they probably heard about the spoke wheel thing. All forms of outreach is like spokes on, a, on an old wheel that drives to the hub, which is, which is the internet. Because we can track the entry points from all of those different methodologies and determine where people come from. And if I spent five grand on this and five grand on that, and this produced sales and that didn't, stop doing that and do more of this. Or change that so that works differently. Okay? That's how we, fundamentally how we do that is we track everything measure everything so we can determine what is working and what's not working. This process is fundamental to having your web presence work for you 24-7 globally. If you have this in place, it will produce results for you. If you don't have it in place, you will fail. Because you can't sell something if you don't show up. If you're not in the conversation, if you don't make the short list, of the three people that could potentially put this new heating and cooling system in, and I'm actually going to talk to these people. If you don't make that short list, then I don't care if you've got a better product, I don't care if it's cheaper, I don't care if it's going to last longer, and you've got the best support in the world. It's like I always say, what's better, a $50,000 billboard in a cornfield or something written with lipstick on a napkin when the person sees the lipstick in the napkin and you don't see the billboard in the cornfield. The napkin's more effective. So we have to get these messages, we have to get this web presence, these vehicles for both your B2C, which are your face of your business to the consumer if you're going direct to consumer. We have to get this methodology implemented for that aspect of your business. Now, if you're doing this, you're doing good at a corporate level. If you're not doing this, call us. That's the pitch. Okay, because you need to be doing this. Now, this is hard. I'm not going to lie to you. Figuring all these things out and getting it down and working it is a science. It takes discipline. It takes a marketing department that's going to continue to support it and update it. It requires an investment in an area that oftentimes people do not budget for. They're still budgeting for things that they should cancel or change and move it into another arena. This is one of those things you need to find a way to address for your corporation. For to see. Now, like I said, you're doing good if you can pull us off. Now, we're going to walk on water now if you can do this for your dealings during your network. Because now it gets very challenging because figuring this stuff out and getting somebody else to do it is really hard. Because, I mean, first of all, how many people here have a dealer distributor network that they think that their dealers are just doing an awesome job at selling their product or service? Okay. It's really hard. Everyone's in the same boat. It's really challenging to do. 
because these people do not have the expertise to do this. They also don't have the funding that the corporation has to invest and pay people like myself to figure this stuff out for them and implement them. They're just like, I need for it to work. And I'm sure that that's the frustration that you guys have experienced with your dealers and your network. So, you must develop an effective strategy that addresses each aspect of this net-centered process, whether you call it net-centered or you call it something else. Um, that's going to work very well for your B2C environment. That strategy also has to work for your dealers and distributors in a way that will work even if they don't do anything. That's set the bar high, right? Because if it requires them to do something, what's going to happen? There you go. That is if they do something, they'll screw it up. More than likely they wouldn't do anything. Okay, so we have to develop something that's going to work even if they do nothing. Well, Sears ABS has been doing this, like I said, for a long time. We've worked with a lot of manufacturing companies. And we've developed some methodologies, practices, and some technology that addresses a lot of the challenges and stuff. I'm going to try to not make this a pitch and have it be more of a, this is things that you need to do, and then you can make your own decisions. Now, remembering the challenges of not having anything to spend, not having a whole bunch of resources to assign the task, and having dealers and distributors that won't do anything, and it seems like this incredible hurdle that you have to get over to actually take your value proposition, your updated product information, all of this stuff, and get it out in front of folks in a localized way so that these dealers sitting out in the middle of wherever they are can service and give your product the justification that it needs so that people will make the decision to buy it. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, you have to have a dealer network content distribution system that allows you to do all things that you would do for your corporate website and leverage it across your entire dealer network and make it look like they're actually doing it. So when people look for what it is that you offer through that dealer network, that they find the dealer, and the dealer looks competent, the dealer has the right product information, the right brand, the right pricing, the right promotions going on right now so that the product will be competitive, all the things that I spoke to earlier, um, and show up in localized search. So when someone locally whips their phone out and looks for that thing that they need, that your dealer shows up with the most current promotion, with updated product information, it looks like these people are rocket scientists, even though you and I know they are not. I don't want to speak down too much to dealers, but I also want to be honest with you about what we have to deal with in the programs that we have implemented. Helping these people help themselves is a Jerry Maguire moment. You know, help me help you type of situation. We're basically begging. We can't even pay these people to do it. So we developed this technology we call CHAMP. It's a program that provides some information and stuff on it that allows the person at the corporate level, and Nick and Tim can both speak to this today, to be able to go in and put in updated product information, updated pricing information, updated information on new series of products, um, updated promotions, campaigns, uh, things that allow you to be seasonal, be ahead of the game, and effectively disseminate that information out across your entire network, whether that's across the United States, across the world, across Indiana, across town, whatever the case may be. And there's personalization that takes place to it that does a lot of stuff that's really technical, so that Google thinks that you're wonderful and special, and it all shows up like it's supposed to. Um, and Macy's, this company in this particular example, I think Tim is probably going to guess that where this Denver example came from. So people in, the Den in Denver can find the widgets that you sell, and the people in Aurora and Castle Rock, which are 50,000 plus uh, subdivisions of the, uh, of the Denver metro area, to be able to find the product and service offering that, that it can utilize and connect with a dealer who can sell your product and service. Now, that same effort just serviced like 500 other dealers 
that same method, that same cost associated with it, just worked with all the people across the entire video network. And that effort, that one to many uh, component that I said is very critical in this, just took place and made all of these people look like they were all active, updated their Facebook, did lots of stuff that made them look like they were brilliant, made the people out there that are looking for it look like they're active, so that they get an opportunity to come in and basically say, yes, may I help you? And they go, I'm interested in this. This is what I found out about, and this is what I want to talk about and purchase. Does this make sense? And we have the information that we can go into that, that explains this in greater detail, but this is the concept that you have to figure out how to address. Because you're not going to go to every one of these dealers and fix their online presence. You're not going to do that. You can't afford to do it. And you're not going to get them to go through that whole net center thing that we're talking about and figure out not just for your services but for the other services they offer. The key to your success of the dealer network is having the dealers be successful. They have to be excited about doing it because they're going to make more money. That's capitalism. Okay, so keeping that stuff in mind, I might refer back to it here in a moment. But increasing output of your existing network. I've got some funny ones in here for you. So let's, let's start off with how do I get my dealers to market my product? Does anybody know how to do that? Because I would love to talk with you about it if you, if you have an answer to that. Because I haven't been able to figure it out. They, they don't. They don't market your product. So what you have to do is do it for them. Right? That's what you have to do because if you rely on them to do it, they're not going to do it. And we try every trick in the book to try to convince them to do it. But if they do it at very best, they'll do it halfway. Horribly, they'll get something wrong. So the trick is, in reference to the system, leveraging the smart people, the marketing folks at the corporate, and I've given these guys a lot of credit, the marketing guys at the corporate entity, the ability to use their knowledge, their resources, the capital that they invested in research, all of these things to put a strategy together that hopefully figures this stuff out and then implements a solution that markets that product through their dealer for them. How do I get my dealers to protect my brand? There's going to be a theme developed. You can't. You can't get your dealers to protect the brand. You have to do it. You have to develop a system with processes and methodologies that allows them not to screw this up. You have to put those things in place and leverage them in a way that don't cost you a fortune. Doesn't require you to hire, have, have to hire another 10 people or ask for another $50,000 to accomplish it. You have to put a system in place that will do it for you. And if you think that you can figure out how to do this, through some type of contract or something, then just good luck with all of that. Let me know how it all turns out. How do I get my dealers to keep the information on my products up to date? Everyone, any, anybody have a problem with this ever? I mean, this is some real world stuff here. I can pick on Tim again. I mean, I bet you he's still got dealers. He's got products been discontinued for three years. But they're trying to sell it online. Fair? We've got all kinds of websites. I'll go out and check out our dealers' websites. And I don't know how many I've found, but brochures for products we literally haven't sold in five years, seven years. Yeah. And then what does it make that dealer look like when someone actually gets on their site and finds them and goes there interested in a product that they haven't sold for five years? It makes them look like a bunch of yahoos. That's what it makes them look like. Now, you can tell them, you look like an idiot doing this. You need to update this. And they go, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll take care of it. I don't know. It's not going to work. So you have to develop a methodology where the smart people are making those modifications, making sure that the product information is up to date on your product or service. I mean, if you can't do this, there's no way you're going to do one of the latter things where we're talking about special promotions. Well, they probably still have the special promotion for that five-year discontinued product selling too. So it's not accurate. And I'm telling you, going back to those picky consumers on the internet these days, they're going to tolerate very much of that. They're going to see that and go like, mm, next. What my partner always calls the Google two step. You know, you click on the link, you look at the website, this back, and you go to the next one, back. You try to find one that looks a little credible, it's that, that quality sniff test. 
you know, it looks like maybe they sort of kind of might do what I'm looking for, that I might read it, but otherwise I'm not going to look at it. So this stuff is super important. I like my dealers get new manufacturer promotions uh, to the consumers. This is what I was picking on. If you can't get them to have accurate product information, how are they going to do this up to the minute stuff that the public is demanding them? Now, I know we just we did a promotion with uh, Water Furnace here a while back where there was like a $2,000 manufacturer rebate associated with a, a product that was going out for a period of time. And it's like, what do you think the chances were that some of those dealers that had a website that had product that had been discontinued five years ago were actively promoting that extremely competitive offer? Not happening. How are you going to get them to do it? Tim will explain it, but basically, he's doing it. He and his team are doing that across the entire network. How do I get my dealers to leverage my marketing assets to improve their performance? This is like, I don't know, getting a report card or something? I mean, this sucks. Getting them to utilize the assets that are generated by your marketing department to maximize their performance is not a common problem. It's not something that you can mail to them, and it's not something that the sales guy that you have there that's going to talk to them for 10 minutes is going to whip into them a stick. You have to create something that's going to do this for them. Okay. That was something that that thing that I was talking about that was a pitch actually does. I want my dealers to be better dealers. Now, wouldn't that be wonderful? I mean, the truth, to make you be more successful with your dealer distributor network, you have to help them be better dealers, right? You have to make them be more successful. You have to develop some form of strategy that's going to make them look good whether they show up on time or not. So that's what this is all about. And if you think you can pull that off without some kind of a centrally controlled distribution methodology for your marketing resources and marketing concepts and ideas that you control as a corporate entity, you're living in a place called Fairyland. Now, all of those things being said, I want to talk a little bit about this growth and expansion. You know, the other stuff's about retention, but. You want your dealers to be performers. You want them to be selling your product and service very successfully to the very best of their ability. You want to have the best dealer network that you can have who are incentivized to do the right thing for you because it's in their best interest. Well, how do you grow and expand your network? You do that by creating a more profitable scenario for them. You have to develop a package that includes these marketing capabilities that I was talking about. You know, if you're going to a new dealer and you say, I've got a widget, and this widget has this much margin, and if you sell this widget, you're going to make some money. You want this widget? I mean, think about what you have to do to people in the field that are trying to get more dealers to sell your product and service. What you have to do today is address these challenges that I was talking about that they are struggling with in the field. They don't know how to do this stuff. They don't know how to successfully promote it. They don't have the education, the time, the resources, the money, any of the things, the drive, the incentive, the pick up, pick a descriptor. They don't have those things. So you have to develop a package that's going to make this whole thing. I'm just going to skip through this in these three points. You have to say, selling my product is going to make me more money. It's going to be less work because I don't like to do anything. And it's going to be better supported because I've got all this amazing infrastructure in here tied back to some really smart people at corporate that's going to answer all of your questions. Now, if you put that package together and you help them overcome these challenges, now you have a differentiator that the other guy doesn't have. You know, all they could do in the past was sell it to you cheaper. And as you guys know, you can only squeeze that thing so far. You've got to make these, overcoming these challenges, like working with this company who has this solution supported by corporate that manages all of these things and makes me look brilliant 
and makes me more money and I have to do less work, where do I sign? You have to put that together. You have to take control. You have to act based on some of the things that we were talking about earlier. I mean, you have to get up and do it because they're not going to do it for you. People are lazy. And you have to drive them by making things. You have to incentivize people to do that. It's like if you get the kids and you want them to mow the grass, you have to incentivize them to do it. Otherwise, they're just not going to say, hey, Dad, anything you want me to do around the house? I mean, you have to put something together that makes them like, hey, I made 50 bucks last time I cut the grass. I'm going to volunteer for that again. You know, you have to put something together that incentivizes them. You know, let them use the car. So if you put a better program together, then you will be able to walk into a dealer and differentiate yourself and get more dealers. Because everyone likes a win, win, win. Basically, if you're going to take something away from my discussion, <coughs> you have to have a system that ensures your dealer and distributor success and yours. You have to have a system that's going to do that within doing almost nothing. Because nothing is the only thing that you can depend on them actually doing. So you have to put programs in place to support them and actively do the things necessary to achieve the objectives that you want to achieve, to go to overcome the challenges that we talked about here, to overcome those challenges and give them world-class marketing locally of your product and service where you don't have to worry about your brand, you don't have to write your product information, you don't have to write your pricing. Well, the promotions that you roll out, roll out to them. You can provide them resources for doing what they need to do. This is how you can be successful. Paint my numbers. Do this. I've got customers who provide information through portal systems that tell them where to set the display up and what happens when you spill it, how you clean it up. You know, don't set it in front of sunlight because it changes colors. You know, all of these things to try to help them be better at it. And they do it because it makes them more money. <laughs> they sell it. They make more money and it's something in it for them. Now, I'm going to uh, small little pitch here and try to keep this to a minimum. But how many people would like to have a solution that did all of this stuff for their company? I mean, everybody that has a dealer distributor network would want something like this. And if I was to tell you that you could have it for free, would that be a price that you could afford? Okay, so talk with the team about that. Because this, honest to God, I've been doing this for a long time. This is amazing. This really, really will help you. It's real world answers to real challenges that you have in marketing. Everyone, all the points, you know, all the points that I was making, I was seeing heads nod. I mean, this is real stuff. It's, it's not fluff. You take it for what it is. But this stuff can really, really help you. And what I like to do now is I can turn this back over to Matthew, but what we're going to do next is uh, I think Tim, you're up next. Uh, Tim Lynn from Water Furnish International is going to come and talk with you about how they've addressed these problems and challenges and deployed a solution uh, by us that addresses these things. And he can talk to how it's worked, how it's performed, you know, how you know, the expense of things, the kind of results that he's seen, and how it's helped them leverage you know, a one-to-many relationship to be able to deal with all those things across all our dealers. And then after that, uh, Nick Bond from Westmore Transmission. Um, he not only fixes transmissions, but he also remanufactures these things and goes through a dealer network all the time. <coughs> he has hundreds of dealers that are repairing transmissions in the field that he actually services here in Fort Wayne uh, with people that he's hired here. So these folks are creating jobs and reaching out all over the nation selling their products and services. And they are actually seizing control of the marketing for their products and services across their dealer networks. Okay? If you have any questions, we're going to have a panel discussion afterwards, and I'll be on, and you can zing me in. Uh, any questions about you know, things that are pertinent to your particular deal in that one? So, that is all. Thank you. Thank you.